The war started in 1938 in, in, uh, between Germany and Poland. Then naturally they went, Germany moved on to other countries, you know, and every occupied other com country. I think Yugoslavia was a less country they occupied. My name is Johann Scherer. I was born on February 20th, 1938 in Ramorak, Banat, Yugoslavia. And I lived there with my parents until 1945. We grew our own food, uh, vegetables, uh, animals, uh, pigs, whatever, for, su for survival, for meat, okay? And uh, we didn't have no electricity, no telephone, or anything like that. But we just do it just like a farmer. Okay, then I was seven years old in 1945. That's when the communists took over. And the uh, Yugoslav soldiers, the communist soldiers came in. They took anybody that had a, like a German name like in the army, and if, if you don't go, they shoot you. So you had to go. They came in. I was, I think I was in the backyard, I think. They came in, and my mom, she was in the house. And dad, he was gone already. Uh, the Germans took him. So he was in Siberia already. And uh, just told us, get out of the house. So they took us out of the house and put us in, in the vehicle. and. That they drove off. You know, that's, that's just, there was nothing there, you know. Right? We couldn't have, take nothing, you know. You didn't have no choice to pick up this or pick up this to take with you. Uh -uh. It's just what you had, what, what you were wearing, you know. And that's it. Took us by gunpoint, out put us on a vehicle, and the vehicle took us to Rudolfnad in a concentration camp. So. Took us out and that was it. I took the, from one house to the other house. Everybody. And so that was in, in 1st of May, 1945, when they picked us up. And took us to the Rudolf Nod and But from 45 to 48, we were in, in Rudolf Nod, in the concentration camp. They put in 45,000 people in. After three years, only 4,000 people survived. The rest of them all died, passed away. Okay, my brother, they took him. They took my dad. They made a border patrolman out of him between the Panat and uh, Romania. They told me anybody comes within 100 meters to the border, shoot him. So, my dad, he didn't pay much attention, you know, so they took him out there, showed him where to walk. But his best friend came up and work on the field. Dad said, I cannot shoot my best friend, no way. I guess the chairman must have watched him. So on the evening, when they picked him up, they put him for one month in a labor camp. Then they put him right back again on the border. and. Uh, Dad says, I can't shoot nobody. So he just put down his rifle, his coat, and his hat, stepped across the border, and they took him to Siberia. And then out of Siberia, he escaped from over there, took him over three years to get back to, the, to Yugoslavia. So we were in the concentration camp from 1945 to 1948. For the first three months, they only gave one slice of bread for survival. The third month, the second third month, they gave you one pea for survival. Meantime, we ate bugs, roots, grass, birds, whatever you could find. And sometimes you eat something that was poisonous, then you die, okay? But meantime, People died from starvation. You look around, you see dead people lying every place. That's my uncle. That's my aunt. When the Germans came in the, in the Mramorak, they drafted him in, into their army, and we never seen him no more after that. 
even up to the present. We've never seen him no more. That's my aunt, his wife. Her name was Katarina, and his name was Fr Fritz. Fritz. That's why it was Kalbach. Mr. and Mrs. Kalbach. <laughs> She was with us in the concentration camp and in the labor camp together. For some reason, I don't know why, we, we never got separated. We were to, together for some reason. She, she kept me alive. I don't know if I would have survived if we not here, if we're here so keeping me alive or not, I don't know. When they put us in the concentration camp, she was in the state together with us all the time. And she breastfeeded me to, for survival. And I did survive, and she was really good. And she survived it. And, but instead of going to Austria, she went to Germany. And she stayed in Germany. But we, we came, went to Austria, and from Austria we came to the United States. And then I. Uh, 1948, they closed up the concentration camp and put us in a labor camp. And from 48 to 40 to 50, for two years we were in the labor camp. All right, this is the labor camp from 1948 to 1950, in the forced labor camp in Yugoslavia. Okay, that's my dad, that's my brother. This is me. That's my mom. I don't know who those two ladies are. I, don't, I have no idea. But that was in the labor camp. That's where we had to make bricks. We were forced to make bricks in the labor camp for two years. And uh, after two years, that's when we went out of the, to Austria, 1950. Uh, Dad, when he got uh, trapped in the German army, they took him in made a border patrolman out of him because he wouldn't uh, shoot people the way they told him, the Germans told him to do it. So he went across the border, they took him to Siberia. Then from Siberia he escaped on foot, went back to Yugoslavia, took him just over three years to get back to Yugoslavia. So when we got out of the concentration camp, they put us in labor camp, that's when he showed up. That's how he come. How come he was in the labor camp too with us? But he just showed up at that time. So we make the bricks, okay? They gotta try, okay? And when they try, they we pile them up under those crosses, okay? And they put the canvas, whatever. So when it rains, so, so they don't get wet. So they put them all in there. When they got enough in there, they put them in a big oven. And they fire up the oven. Is, the oven is being fired with coal. They put coals in there. And the heat turns the bricks red. When they're red, then they take them out. Then you can use them, build whatever you want to build. Whatever you want. Those are the scotches are. About eight, nine years old, somewhere around there. No matter how old you are, you have to work. And a lot of times they came, they gave me a wheelbarrow with six or seventy bricks on it. And you, as a kid, I had to wheel them from one place to another place, you know. So you were working there. Well, when I was working, a lot of times, uh, one thing is, there was no fence around or anything where they keep you in. You could walk out, out of, out of the, the area, you know. On the field, a lot of times we went out of the field, and there's one time we found a field where they had watermelons. So we went up there to get some watermelons, but then the, the army came in <laughs> to watch the water can, uh, watermelons, so he couldn't go up there no more. I don't know, they shoot you. <laughs> so, I mean, you find anything you can find to, to eat, you know. If there's a stream there, if there's a fishing area. So I had to catch a fish, whatever, you know. But they did give you some food, you know, so and so much uh, every day, you know. 
just to keep your strength up so you can work, you know. But if you don't have no food, you can't work, you know. They only gave you food for survival and that's it, so you can work. And that, that's all, that's all the, that's why they give you the food. Otherwise they wouldn't give you anything. If you tried to leave the labor camp, what would happen? Where are you going to go? You go to another town, you don't belong over there. What? The police come or, or the army comes and pick you up. And put you back? That's right. <laughs>